I think as far as strength, I don't think anyone in this world gave me the strength like my Georgie. Uh, my husband, I, I never really knew how much I loved him. I, that, I know that sounds strange because I adored him before. I adored my husband. I idolize him now. Uh, for a man, you know, uh, it's very strange. People are honoring me and I'm being given keys to cities and doing a lot of things. And I don't know why someone doesn't honor my husband. I don't think there was ever a point that Tody wanted to give up. I don't, I don't remember any time. Did you ever doubt she'd make it? No, I always, I never doubted that she wouldn't make it, you know, that she, uh, there were times possibly when she was very, very ill that, uh, that I thought uh, medically she might not make it. Uh, I think it's much harder on the people that are around you than it was on me. I think that's where the word people could say, you're, you're very courageous. I'm not courageous. I think the people that go through it with you, they're courageous. That it takes a certain kind of, kind of courage for a husband to come through a thing like this and get up and dress you every morning. And uh, I mean, I just, func I cannot function without my Georgie. I think she tried to make it easier for everybody. Once again, in her attitude, she felt that if, uh, if she were not mm, depressed, then family, friends also would not be depressed. My manager is probably in a, in a part of my heart saved only for him. He is so special. He's the only one I can yell at, and he screams at me. And we walk away and kiss goodbye, and uh, he goes his way and I go my way. But I think Howie Hindestein is my social, I think he's my security blanket. There was never any doubt that Tody Fields would come back to this business. It was just a matter of when. As a matter of fact, when uh, this thing happened, which was uh, last April, all I did was cancel uh, jobs four weeks in advance. I was so confident that she was going to come back that as the four weeks went by, then I canceled the next job and the next job until finally we just decided among us that we would give it enough time so that when she, I made the next date, she would really and truly come back. But we knew she was going to come back. You think this is too soon? Absolutely not. No, uh, this is not too soon for her to come back. Uh, it's the proper timing for her to come back. Uh, I would imagine if, I did, you know, if we didn't force her into this, if she didn't force herself into working tonight, uh, I'm sure that uh, she could have used the rest or whatever, but she needed this. I don't know what gives her the driving guts that she has. It's just uh, her spirit. That's just the way she is. Well, I guess the biggest obstacle was to get my head uh, in, to get my head in order. I know this is going to sound strange because I guess I've heard from almost every handicapped person there is. I never, w I was lucky enough my family didn't allow me to be handicapped. Um, nobody ever said a kind word to me. Uh, everything was a joke. Um, and uh, there were many nights of crying. Don't think I went through this without a lot of good crying. But I cried by myself. I realized if you want people to feel comfortable around you, then you can't dwell on anything. You've got to, people must enjoy being around you, otherwise you'll lose them all. And I realized that right away. I could tell by the friends that couldn't cope with it that would come up with me, uh, come up to me and say, you know, uh, I'd see their eyes go down. I have one friend that would stare at my leg to find out which one it was. There are many obstacles that you have to go through. Once you go through them once, you shouldn't have to dwell on them. And uh, in fact, you know, my husband gave me, uh, for Valentine's Day, gave me an ankle bracelet. Uh, it says bad leg. Um, so I would know which one wasn't mine. He was going to have use other leg with an arrow to the good one, which he thought of afterwards. But uh, that's the way they treat it. And that's the way I treat it. I'm, but I guess I always love life. And if you've got as much as I have, 
and you've got kids like I have, and a husband, and a family like I have, you want to live. I think possibly Toadie is more nervous about tonight than I am because I, uh, I've always known what she's capable of. Uh, she knows what she's capable of. It just, uh, until it happens, she's not, there's always that little bit of doubt. But uh, I think uh, Toadie and I have uh, been together long enough that we know each other pretty well and I know uh, what her limits are, what she can do, what she can't do, and she does too. I would say uh, the most nervous tonight was would probably be me. I would imagine me. Uh, a lot has gone by. Uh, you must understand, Susan, also, we've been together, as I said, 17 years. That's a lot of years. My wife and I just celebrated our 29th anniversary last week. Uh, we have a granddaughter that is, was one year old last week, born just a week before Tody went into the hospital. So we kind of grew up together. Our children were young and grew up together. And uh, I, I think at this moment, I am a little more nervous than she is or Georgie. Am I ready for them? Are they ready for me? <laughs> they gotta be ready for me. what I go through every single day for three weeks. Every single night I go in in for this, I do the exact same thing. We have such a beautiful dinner and everything upstairs. I think she's gonna be fine, but I'm gonna fall apart. <laughs> what are you anticipating most about tonight? It's such a sentimental evening. It's such a, and a I guess we're all just uh, a little, on edge, not worried about, about Toadie or how she will perform because she'll outdo us all, and, you know. But it's just, uh, I think we all recognize that she's got something very, very special that the rest of us don't have. And it's, it's mind-boggling to me. Uh, Toadie Fields is a happening. Uh, it's a theatrical happening. And I want her to be a part of it. She's uh, an extraordinary woman with an extraordinary talent who had an extraordinary event happen to her. And the whole thing is something I want to be part of because it's show business with a capital S-H-O-W. B-U-Z-Z, however you spell that other. Ah, uh, it's just going to be one of those soul baths where someone has come back from a bad thing. And, and everyone is looking forward to it, including myself. It, it's, it's, it's just like, looking at heaven. I think Toadie's return means more to uh, not just show business people. I think what it really says is it's an example of how a person can gather together courage and uh, complete their life without a, uh, a handicap of the mind, just because they have a handicap of the body. And I think it should be an inspiration to every person who in any way, or way feels that uh, he or she uh, has a handicap. And that's what I think is so marvelous about her. Well, this evening, I think, means to me uh, survival, survival of a great lady, and um, I, I just, I'm, I'm just uh, speechless for this evening. It, it's so emotional for me to be here with Toadie, and uh, she just represents courage and spirit and spunk and moxie, and uh, a hell of a lot. Are you nervous for her tonight? 
I am so nervous for her that I can hardly speak. I, I always have tremendous empathy for performers on opening nights, uh, but tonight it's just exceptional. And I am not nervous for her talent or anything, but with all of these people here and, and so many celebrities and everything, I don't, I don't think I could do it. I'm in awe, really. What moment of this evening are you anticipating the most? I think probably the moment that I'm anticipating the most is the beginning of Todi's act, the moment she walks out, and the moment she walks off. I mean, I think those two moments will be probably two of the most memorable moments that I will ever have in show business, really. So to see this tonight, this exciting, glamorous, wonderful turnout for this little girl who kept saying in April she was going to open, and I doubted it. I said, where, how? But with her indomitable spirit, she's having this glamorous, exciting, wonderful opening night. So it's a kind of good, wonderful evening for me, too. Nice to be here. It's the... Lovely to be here. It's a thrill to be here. Thank you, Jane. Oh, I see. You mean Tony Fields. Yes, that is a thrill. She's beautiful. What does this evening mean to the two of you tonight? First of all, it means a free dinner. But above and beyond that, why is my finger up again? Tony Fields is one of the funniest women in the world, and we love her dearly, and we're very happy to be here with her. It means even more to me than that, our being here this evening. Um, aside from the fact that the whole world knows how talented Tony is, I think her story is a story in courage and in love and in great popularity because certainly this is an enormous room that is packed not only with people but with the most gorgeous flowers I've ever seen. And when Flowers I have come from all over the world. From all over the world. And when I show. tried to find our flowers, I was told that they're down in her dressing room, which also looks like a garden. <laughs> and that really, um, it's, it's just... Love for everybody. Everybody has love for Tony. Tony Fields is right. is an unusual performer. Bob Mackey, no, Bob Mackey has done. Bob Mackey and Ray Agion have done every piece of wardrobe I have worn for the past um, eight nine years. They aren't good. They're spectacular. Each thing they give me is like a new Christmas present for me. I think they're the most brilliant designers in the country, as far as as. No, as far as anything. If, if you were there, or if you knew what it was a year ago, and with, well, what it is tonight, it's just like a miracle, more than anything in the world, I think. This is my first time I've seen Tony perform tonight. I've done clothes for her for over a year now, or two years, I guess it is. and. Uh, She's always been after me, and she says, well, I have to lose a leg for you to come and see me perform. But it isn't that. It's, it's just that she's one of the most stylish, the most incredible ladies that I know. And uh, it isn't often that you can go see an opening with somebody. And it has nothing to do with losing her leg or any of those things. She just has a great deal of style and a great personality. She used to scare the hell out of me, but now I love her. Why did she scare you? Why did she scare me? Well, she, she used to say things to me that really frightened me, you know. I, I said, that lady really is gross. I mean, she's scaring me. And, and uh, all of a sudden I realized if I just talked right back to her, she, she would really just back right down because she's so kind and so, so loyal. And that means a lot to me. You know what? In uh, Jules, you know what to get me? Get me a hot tea with some sweet and low and lemon in it, please. In a glass. I'm Jewish. Well, I'll tell you, Toadie's a very close friend of mine. I think this opening tonight at uh, the Sahara should be tremendous for her. She needs this particular feeling in her heart saying, I know I'm going to do good tonight. I feel it. That's which I told her. Go out and do your show. Do what you have to do, and you'll kill the audience. That's, that's all I can say about this wonderful person. She's great. Uh, working with Tody is like an education. Um, I spent 10 years in the theater and I thought I knew my way around the stage a little bit until I watched her. She's extraordinary. She's one of, I think, maybe four or five people in the history of show business who can go to an audience and grab them and make them care. She has that wonderful thing that Zero Mostella has. She can make an audience roar with laughter, rock. They rock in their seats and the very next moment make them cry. Very, very few people can do that. Maybe Jolson, maybe a couple of others. But she's one of those people. A 
on the desert and golf course. Yeah. It was, oh, it was a lovely house. And every time I sat on the toilet, I thought, God, Betty Grable <laughs> sat here. <laughs> well, it's true. It. I mean, I was so excited. And she must have had very long legs because her toilets were very high. And your feet didn't hit the floor. And my feet never touched the ground. <laughs> what but, started uh, out a possible tragedy wound up to be a very, very nice, nice thing because uh, I was very happy that she's uh, feeling good. She's back into the business. And it uh, goes to show you when you have uh, mind over matter. And if your mind wants to do something, it'll make you better, it'll make you funnier, it'll make you healthier. And she's proved that point. No, I'm not nervous for Toadie tonight because uh, I've seen her once or twice since the accident and since she's gotten back on her feet, shall we say. And uh, she's found something to cope with, you know, and she's kind of was, uh, making the best of it is, is an understatement. She's, she's found a reason for living other than just being a success, being a superstar, being a comedian. I think she finally figured out that maybe God wanted her to do something else other than just be funny and to show people that there's a way to progress, you know, when something bad happens to her. What are you looking forward to the most about tonight? Her smile. I'm looking forward to seeing Toadie's smile. Are you nervous for Toadie tonight? Toadie here? You're kidding. Nervous? No. It's going to be, it's an inspiring thing. She's, uh, she's doing a great deal for a lot of people. Being here after what she's gone through. I know a lot of performers that wouldn't work again after they have a, a cold sore. No, it's, it's uh, in all seriousness, everybody's here because of the magnitude of what she represents, what she's gone through, and she can still do comedy. That, to me, is, that's the epitome of greatness in the character of the woman. Better people than I have equated how funny she is, how marvelous a performer. But to be able to go on after this trauma, and she will, is an inspiration to everybody. So I'm here, because I love her, and she's a friend. Sadly, I believe I was the first to report it, or the first to certainly hear that something had gone wrong with her original surgery. And I think tonight, uh, there's such a thrilling atmosphere here in this room because most of this room is filled with uh, people who love Toady, members of the press who I think only wish her well. And I just can't wait to see that show and see that lady walk on stage with the false leg and everything and know that she has this kind of guts and spirit to not to have allowed this tragedy to have gotten her down, but to rise above it and continue on, as all good troopers should do. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Toady Fields.
Harvey so, but I love you. You know that, don't you? You should be sitting ringside. I want you to know something. I have never been happier in my whole life to be anywhere. I've gotten dressed for three days. Honestly, I am so ready to go back to work. And all because of you, it is so wonderful to know that people love you that much. Your wires, your flowers, and I guess most of all, your prayers. I love, I love you all. How I've missed you all. And now that we're together, I feel ten feet tall. Oh, God. You know what a lovely thing it is? You know what you are? You're all my security blanket. I swear I'd like to sit here and suck my thumb for the rest of the hour. <laughs> it's so wonderful to look out and see so many friends. Do you know, I went upstairs. In fact, we asked them to keep the upstairs room open so I could just go through and see each and every one of the flowers. It's so wonderful when you have rich friends. <laughs> and I know when I'm working steady, by the third job, when you walk in and you see two roses and the card says, it's the thought. <laughs> Screw that, it isn't the thought. I want those flowers. Wait, where, wait a minute, wait, wait. Where are the telegrams I, I, I want to read? Come here, you want to talk about friends? I picked out some of these from two people I adore, Steve and Edie. Break a leg. <laughs> I have received nothing but warmth throughout this, oh, wish I could be there tonight with Biotic Yenta, Merv Griffin, <laughs> hates Jews. Um, one minute. Uh-oh. If the jokes don't go over, put a bandana on your head and pretend you're a pirate. <laughs> Don Rickles. <laughs> if you need acupuncture now, buy yourself a woodpecker. Buddy Hackett, you like these? All warmth, all warmth. I'm reading this to impress you all. I was very, very flattered. Don't worry if you stumble around and fall. I didn't became president. Gerald Ford. Isn't that clear? <laughs> Who put this here? Glad to see you back on your foot again, Dr. Scholl. That's a lie. That's Ramade Kogan, I know him. But it's true. You know, people say, how can you make light of something so serious? Well, it's over. You know what I mean? It's just over. And I must say this to you. I must say that for this whole ordeal, only one thing upset me. And that was the actual buying of the leg. I mean, I have bought a lot of things <laughs> in my day. You just don't wake up one day and say, you know, my leg is worn out. Or I think I'll wait till after Christmas to see if the legs go down. I mean, <laughs> you don't buy a leg, that's all. And so while I was in the hospital, Georgie went everywhere and to look for a place that I could get a prosthesis, which incidentally, I swear this is true, a newspaper woman asked me when I came out of the hospital when I was gonna get my prophylactic. <laughs> I mean, we still use them. That's still in the same place. I just lost my leg. but. But Georgie went everywhere to find a man that makes a, pros a prosthesis, that's what it's called. And he found a lovely little man, and uh, I went, uh, and I, uh, very, very nice, and it was very secluded. Keith, my darling Keith is here tonight, and uh, 
He didn't want me to be nervous, so he wanted to show me what they look like, and he brought in a leg that came up to my shoulder. <laughs> and I was so impressed because all my life, I wanted long legs. You know what I mean? So I said, oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh, I always wanted long legs. He says, cut off the other one and I'll make you a pair. <laughs> so anyway, so he, I said, how long does it take? He says, about two and a half weeks. I said, well, you know, I'm in show business and it's very important how my leg looks because people are gonna be sitting looking at me. He said, Toady, I'm gonna do the best leg I ever did. And he called me up, it was about three weeks, and I went there and I, I really was frightened to death to look at this thing. And he came in and I had never seen anything so bad. I mean, he really screwed up. It was so horrible. It was like this wide and this short. It was ugly. And I started to cry, I said, it's ugly. It's just ugly. And he said, honey, honestly, once we get it on you, we can cut it down, we can do anything. It'll look like your other leg when I get through it. And I put it on, and it was exactly like my other leg. So, where is the great loss? You know, I mean, since Cherise loses his leg, you say, oh God, what legs she had, they were gorgeous, you know what I mean? Lucy, Lucy is 163 years old. She's got the best goddamn legs I ever saw in my life. I mean, other things are falling apart, but her legs are great. <laughs> Why? I swear this is true. I'm walking down the street with Georgie, and I hear a squeak, a terrible squeak, and there's nothing around me to squeak. And I said, why am I squeaking? And we looked around, Georgie said, it's your leg. I said, my leg, and I walked again, and sure enough, squeaking. He said, what do you do? I said, I don't know, go go, Keith. See what the hell you do. So he called Keith, he said, it needs to be oiled. So I had to bring my leg in for an oiling. And he put an STP sticker on my thigh. And I'm good for another thousand miles. I mean, we're, you know? Listen, I want you to know something. If you give it a lot of thought, do you ever know a Jew with good feet? Now think about it. There has never been a Jew alive. We have lousy feet and lousy backs. Isn't that true? Bunions, corns, everything that grows, grows on a Jew's feet. This way, only one foot can hurt me. Look at this. But my muzzle on the bad foot, look at this. I'm getting a bunion over here, look. See this, I swear to God, look at it, it's sticking out here. Is there not a bump on that shoe? Huh? No, Gentiles, no, Gentiles. So, look, like this, they walk straight like a stick. Gentiles. Hello, I'm a Gentile, and I walk straight as a stick. Do you ever see an old Jew? They're schlepping. Schlepping? Hi, I'm an old Jew. I'm 22, and I'm schlepping. It's that stinking food we eat. The bagels, the rye bread, the matzo balls. Do you know what they found out about Jewish food? It goes in, and it never comes out again. It just lays like lead over here. You want to straighten up, you call a roto rooter man. Right? I don't know how the hell we ever won the war. They never showed you a picture of a Jew chasing an Arab. They haven't got one. Could you just picture, wait, Arab! Arab, I want to shoot you! Wait, my feet are killing me! You know how we won the war? We're lucky those Arabs were all those schmatas on their head. They run, trip over the schmata, the Jew shoots them in the tuchus, <laughs> end of the war. You'll see when they find them. They'll all have two holes. And I hope oil is coming out of both of them. Though. Shecky, my little Shecky's here. Look how pretty you look, Sheck. Did you get all dressed up for me, honey? Did you put that all together yourself, Sheck? <laughs> she did, look at this. Every time a man looks like this, he goes, did you get dressed yourself, Harvey? <laughs> no, Lillian, I know, I know. It's amazing about men. Men um, don't approve of our having our rights, right, women? It's true, all of them. And they can't dress themselves, isn't that strange? <laughs> Grown men can't dress themselves. I am married to a man for 26 years that walks into his own closet like an amnesia victim. <laughs> he has never seen anything that's hanging there. Everything is so, oh look, oh. 
He waits for something to fall off the hanger so he don't have to make a decision. And every day the same thing. Let's see. What'll I wear today? Loud enough so I could tell him. Why don't you wear your blue suit? I was going to. Then why have you got brown shoes and white socks on? He thinks that goes with anything. You do too, Sheik. I see that, huh? No, oh, I love them. And once you put an outfit together for them, they wear it till it disintegrates on their body. Isn't that true? Of course it's true. They're like little, little boys. Only their toys are more expensive. Do you want to know something? No, truthfully, this is very, very true. Do you want to know that I am married to a man? I, not very, may, not very many women can say this. If, I, I once said if he had mag, magnetic feed, I'd put him on the dashboard of my car. He is, he is a saint, and I will go through anything in life with my Georgie, but sickness. No, honey, they're a pain in the ass when they're sick. Let me tell you something. We are made of iron next to him. I lay there dying with a leg cut off. Every day he came in. What's wrong, Georgie? I think I'm getting a cold. I mean, I feel a cold coming on. They never arrive, they're always coming on. Well, why don't we sit down and wait for it? How do you know you're getting it? Well, I ache all over and I'm nauseous and my glands. Would you, would you like some chicken soup and an enema? I'll put the chicken soup in the enema. How would you like that? Then he gets into bed with the closest thing in this world to his heart. The clicker to the television set. Why is it his? You know what I realized in the hospital? I realized I have never seen the end of any show on television. Isn't that amaze you girls? Think about it. Right? Of course it's true. If they start to kiss, click, it's over. He must go on to bloodshed. There'll be no kissing. Anything you want to see, he doesn't like. Do you ever notice that? Except football. Football he could watch for four days without going to the toilet. And I know he's going, I can smell it, but I can't find it. I know it's there. He is such a football addict, when we have sex, he does halftime. Has a flag by the bed, da, 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 da. Then every quarter we have to change sides. The man has not been sexually excited in what? How many years is baseball? How many years is it on uh, um, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday? How many years? Eight years? What, honey? Too long, yeah. You know, last time he was excited, I bought a Nikon made of AstroTurf. <laughs> he jumped me right in the living room. I'm lucky he didn't have golf shoes on, right? I'd have eight navels now. But it's true, honey. You want to know we're all television addicts. I have a nephew, uh, two and a half years old, Jordan. Calls himself Norbin, he can't say J's. You know? He is so smart, comes to live with me. I cannot tell you, I, I just had him this whole week. I never loved anything as much in my whole life. It's so much fun to have a little kid around the house. Turn on Sesame Street, <laughs> then mesmerize. Kid multiply, subtracts, divides, add to a hundred. Is that not clever? And cocks in his diaper? <laughs> Why don't they have a cocky day for those kids? Show them what the hell a toilet looks like. Hi, kids, it's cocky day. Let's tune in and watch Big Bird make a turd or whatever the hell they do. Now, another thing. I have been accused, I, I have read so many damn reviews that say she is slightly risque. I work like a nun next to what's going on today. A nun, you hear what I tell you? I laid in that hospital. You know, I went to the Mike Douglas show. They said to me, uh, they were talking about something. I didn't approve of it. And I thought, I won't get involved. You should never be opinionated on television. Don't get along. Be adorable. Ha <laughs> ha, you know. <laughs> what do you think? I said, well, I really don't give a damn. And you know, they bleep me. They bleep me, so help me God, for damn. Now, I was in the hospital. I got to watch Mary Hartman. And, uh, and uh, I know now why they say the name twice, because you don't believe it the first time. <laughs> Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, ah, like this. Like this. So uh, I, I came in when uh, the, uh, the girl singer, what, what is her name, the girl singer? Loretta, Loretta, right, uh, Loretta. Husband was in the accident, right? Her husband was in the accident? I, I'm talking to you. Right, okay. 
so, um... I'm sitting here like a schmuck. Okay. Um, and, uh, the thing that he made love with was, uh, wiped out. Um, is that true? Okay, now listen, on television. Now, right? Now they found a doctor who does transplants. This is on television, and, uh, they had to get a donor, right? A donor? Tell them what the donor was. A dog! You hear this? The donor was a dog! A what? A Great Dane. Now, you know, in two weeks, she has a litter. Um, now, this is television. This is daytime television. How many of you watch General Hospital? Yeah, right. All right? Will you do me a favor, sweetheart? Tell them what Jessie looks like, the head nurse of General Hospital. A beat up old broad? Then how come the whole hospital wants to bang Jessie? Could you tell me that? She bends over for a bedpan. Jessie, bang! I was gonna give up show business and go into bedpans. Do you remember when her husband, Phil, was believed killed in the airplane crash? Right? Do you know they told Jessie, went to a commercial, came back, Jessie had remarried. <laughs> My God, she took that hard, didn't she? Only Phil came back, paralyzed from the neck down. Jessie had already married Peter. What the hell are you doing in a case like that? The stiff comes home. She already had a live Peter in the house. Jessie had to straighten everything out. And oh my God, the day she went to that hospital, as Phil lay paralyzed, and she said, Phil, they talk like that, Phil, Phil, I want to speak to you, Phil. And Georgie and I were going on the road for six weeks. I said, oh, gee, I'm gonna miss the good part now. Do you know I came home after six weeks, turned the set on, she said, did you hear me, Phil? you a question, Phil. Our lives depend on it, Phil. If the answer is yes, blink twice. Do you hear me, Phil? Blink twice. Did you knock up Diane, Phil? And he went, how many times did he knock up Diane? Twice he knocked up Diane. And tell him, who is Diane married to? jail for killing Phil. Did she do it? No, she didn't do it. Augusta did it. And tell him who knocked up Augusta? Peter! Peter! <laughs> did you ever see a busier Peter than that in your whole life? I'd give a million bucks to meet Peter, for God's sake. Now, this is daytime television. We're glad our... You know how lucky we are our kids are in school when this is going on? I mean, I don't know... I don't know from these things. I was brought up with Ma Perkins. No one ever knocked up Ma Perkins. Right, Marty? She just ran her little lumber yard with shuffle. I mean, what is going on? Although I don't know if it's not healthier. Really and truly, when you think about it, it is healthier because you're talking about love and you're talking about sex. I mean, there's so many things I've never done. You know, like I, I'd give anything to do it on the beach. <laughs> do you ever do it on the beach, Chuck? <laughs> I say to Georgie, let's do it on the beach. You say, no, nah, I'll catch cold. <laughs> I, I never did any of those things. I mean, love is what we're talking about. Basics, love. You're not ashamed of your body anymore. Thank God our kids have taught us that. They're so open with love. Did you? No, that's an old shriveled up lady that's applauding there. And I'm gonna get you something. You wanna know something? Shh, no, listen, I want you to think about this. Did you ever really look at people and you can't picture him doing it. <laughs> For the life of me, I can't picture Walter Cronkite doing it. 
He probably says, and that's all there is for Thursday night. And then he turns her over to Walter Severide. What's his name? Eric Severide. Does anybody, do you understand Eric Severide? Because if you do, I'd like you to leave this room. <laughs> he mumbles, he just mumbles. But think of certain people that, that, who? Who's the greatest? Oh, yes, he is. Yeah. Anyway, were you invited? Well, then screw, get out of the room. Someone said, Nixon, he don't have to do it. He's busy screwing the country. Right? Who else? Wait, you what he said? Howard Cassell. Yeah, Howard Cassell, he should do it on the wide world of sports. Really? Who? He yeah. He would fail. Oh, God. Someone said, Lawrence Well, That's funny. He probably does it with bubbles coming out of his ass. And the one and the two. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Oh, what, any? Zazu Pitts, she's dead, honey. She ain't doing it anymore. <laughs> but if you want to do it to her, I don't think she'd mind. No, you know who I can't picture? I can't picture the queen. Could you picture the queen doing it? You think she does it with a pocketbook on her arm and a tiara? <laughs> All right, I'll do it, but I'm taking my pocketbook. <laughs> I know my father never did it. Did your father and mother ever do it? No, no, they never did it. Don't be silly, they wouldn't do dirty things like that. <laughs> look, look, oh, you know that, how nice it is to look around and see all your, all my friends. Jan, Jan, I'm back walking to the stores. The economy will go up, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working again, huh, kid? Oh, God. Jan Murray and I are the two great... In fact, Georgie wants to enter us in the 1980 cross-country shopping Olympics. <laughs> That's how I learned to walk. I swear to God, I went to therapy, and my therapist put a sail rack on either side of the room and said, Go! Walk! And I started to walk like this. I was like a monster, but I walked. I didn't give a damn. But, oh, it's so much fun. I went today shopping. There's a whole new thing with shopping today. I want you to know that. Shopping today is great if you're 13 and weigh 23 pounds. <laughs> I want you to know something that I have found out that thin people are much crazier than fat people. Fat people eat, right? You never saw an unhappy fat person. They live from meal to meal and they eat and they dress and they go and thin people are crazy. They're never thin enough. I mean, I'm so happy at this weight. Somebody says, you know what? 20 more pounds and you're gonna look great. <laughs> Whoever thought I'd get to this? They had to cut my leg off to do it. I mean, what are we talking about? They strapped me in a bed. But I was at a, I was at a party the other night, a lovely party where they serve hors d'oeuvres. You know that kind of party? And they count how many toothpicks you have in your hand. So. <laughs> I was standing with a woman that maybe weighed 35 pounds. And they said, would you like an hors d'oeuvre? And she said, no, thanks. I'm trying to lose a few pounds. And the door opened, and she blew out. I saw a dress in Magnus today. I swear this is true. I said, what size is that dress coming? She said, there are new European sizes. One, two, three, and four. I said, good. Give me a four, two threes, and a one. Who the hell wears a one? Olive oil wears a one. No living, Judy. Judy Tannen wears a one. But she got a big ass. No, that's true. She's skinny like a stick with a big ass. But anyway, how the hell I get into that? And you know what? No, it's true. You look around, men are so comfortable. They have done things to women. It is amazing what they've done to us, right? Pantyhose. How many years I tell you about pantyhose? Right, I never bought a pair of pantyhose that fit me or where the crotch went where it belonged in my whole life. Either ended up dying it by your knees or around your neck. You tied it with two balls. Now they have a new thing. The chic thing is jumpsuits. Great for a man. I mean, he has to go to the toilet, unzips himself, he goes. What do we have to do, kids? <laughs> Take it all off if you're smart. If you're stupid like I am, 
You go into the bathroom, every time I do the same thing, I say, hey, the hell with it, I ain't gonna get undressed. And I pull up this leg and pull it to the side, right? And then you wet the whole leg and you walk around the whole day. Gee, I wish I hadn't done that. This thing is starting to harden. I mean... Should I do a song? You wanna know something? Could I show him something? I want you to realize that you understand who makes all these things to kill us. Do you girls? Who? Incidentally, when I talk to you, answer. Who? Yeah. Would you believe, isn't that nice? Would you believe, uh, that's the King family. They showed up and uh, they, they took the whole back of the room. But um, you know what Stevie wanted me to say? You're probably wondering, why I have a cane. He said, did you see Jaws? I told you it wasn't good, Stevie. You, sure, what do they care? They keep going higher and higher and I'm gonna go into the toilet. But anyway, I wanna do a song. I wanna do a song that I did in my act about 10 years ago. And um, it has a special meaning for me now. And I love the song. The song was written about about 80 years ago yeah. and I want you to know that I was so thrilled because the man that wrote the song called me today and said uh... <laughs> now that's funny I don't care what anybody said that's funny it is one of my favorite songs and I have never loved anything like I love this song. It's called a song that is one of my favorite songs that I've never loved anything like I know. Incidentally, I have to tell you something because I, I'm in terrible pain at this moment that I am bending over. My darling friend, Rosemary, Rosemary, who is 93 and still wearing bows in her hair, came to me tonight and said, this was blessed, and I want you to wear it so you'll have good luck for the show. And I stuck the goddamn thing in my bra, and it's a palm for Easter Sunday. But I never had such pain. Wait, will you get the goddamn thing out of it? Thank God Edie didn't come with her herbs. Wait a minute, I got it. Edie has uh, the Ruta, you know, Sephardic. They're a little crazy. So anyway, she reads your fortune after the show. I hope you love the song like I love the song. What is the song? <laughs> okay. At the end of the rainbow, there's happiness. Not a class. You cleaned out? I'd you like to start singing? <sighs> Any get on me, Harvey? Am, am I clean? This is a new gown. If you do this... No, shh. Come on, no. Please, I wanted to be serious. No, come on, this is serious. At the end of the rainbow, there's happiness. And to find it, how often I've tried. But my life is a race. Where is the humor in what I'm doing? <laughs> Just a wild goose chase. And my dreams have often been denied. Why am I always so unhappy? <laughs> what can the reason? I wonder if the world's I wonder 
if it could be me. I'm always chasing things. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the hell happened over there? Fiddler! Fiddler! What happened? What happened? What happened? you come over here. What is wrong? What are you? Bring your one piece of... What happened, sweetheart? Wait a minute, this is... The door, the door, the, the air conditioning is on and it's right on my back and, and, and I think I'm coming down with a cold. Can I tell you something? You don't, no, no, you don't understand. This is a moment in my act where there's no laughter. This is the serious part. The serious part of my act. And you are in the fiddle section. See the rest of the musicians? No, 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 no. That's wrong. I, I shouldn't be in the fiddle section. I'm Why? a violinist. The hell's the difference between a fiddler and a violinist? $2,500 a week. You mean to tell me that you play like a concert? You're a concert violinist? Yes, yes. I'm very impressed by that. In big halls with, with men waving their arms in front of you? Well, not, not in big I, I play for PTA meetings. And, uh, <laughs> Hadassah. Uh, yeah, Hadassah, yes, yes. I've, I've done two Hadassah affairs, yes. I have, and uh, have you, uh, uh, supermarkets. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. Do you ever work Ralph's? <laughs> There's you an option it. on it. You want to know, um, you mean you have never worked to a, a full room like this? No, no, never. You're kidding me. You've never done a solo to a crowded full room? No, not, not, not like this. No, no, not truly, not like Would this. Would you like to? Would you like to do a solo? Wait a minute. No, no, I don't. I know. Everybody should have their time. Would you like, uh, bring me a microphone over here. I'm going to let you do a solo. I'm going to go change my gown. Just a couple of minutes. I don't want, you know, um, uh, just bring the microphone over here. And I want to tell you... A little further over, young man. <laughs> uh, what, uh, get it up a little. He can't get it up a little. Uh, I know him personally, and it's been a bad year. Is that all right? Fine, young man, fine. Good. Fine. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just go over there and uh, change my gown. And uh, if... Uh, can I give you a hand? Can you give me a hand? Yeah. Schmuck, I need a foot. Oh. Look at <laughs> A hand he's giving me, all right? A lot of class. I will um, go over there, and if you do a very good job, I'm going to get you on the Ed Sullivan Show. Would you like that? Where's my cane? That'd be sensational. All right, because I didn't want to fall on my ass. And I will walk right over here. Look, look at me. What a great lady to give me my chance. That's marvelous. Great lady, great lady. My big chance. You want to do you want to do one chorus of of um, of talk of the town? May I have some magenta lights, please? Magenta lights. Fine. <laughs> uh. I have such a funny feeling. I'll open my eyes. Nobody will be here. Would you all sing along me? If you don't know the words, sing the lyrics, and I'd appreciate it very, very much. Uh, Minnie, uh, wait for me in the car, all right? Be a star, sing with Davy Carr. Lay it out real big. Come on, do it, kids. Do it, baby.
Italians here? What happened to Hoffa? <laughs> hold, hold. You haven't done a damn thing yet, Sean. Thank God I'm a country boy. <laughs> from this whole thing here. Where the hell were we? <laughs> Minnie, wait for me. Uh, not delicious. I can't tell you how thrilling it is to bring someone like Davey to Las Vegas. You've never had the pleasure of seeing him. I worked one of my first jobs in the business in the Catskills with Davey and I laughed at him and I thought about it a couple of months ago and I tell you we stand backstage every night and just fall on. Is he, is he not the most precious thing? Um, do you like the dress? Would you believe that this body was under the other one all the time? My darling Bob Mackey and Ray Agan. What are you, yay? If you knew what this goddamn dress cost me, and I flew them here yet. Oh, God, I, I can't wait to go back and get dressed every night. You know what? I would just like to take a minute out and acknowledge um, a gentleman sitting at the piano. Um, I love him. This kid was born to be a piano player. Every other finger is black. That is such a bad joke. I mean, it's really old and tacky. I don't care. But um, you must remember that all the people that I am surrounded by through my entire career have had a pretty rough year. And I want you to know that every one of them, the day I went back to work, were all there sitting and waiting for me. My adorable piano player, Stormy Sachs. And my arranger. And I must say that I like many bands that I work with. I've worked with some very, very good orchestras, but I've never loved an orchestra like I love these darling men and ladies. Would you please stand up? Jack Eglash, ladies and gentlemen, and the Ashley Tinians. I just made that up. Thank you, Jack. Do you know what I'd like to do? I would like very much, you know, my opening song that I did tonight called Friends was written by Lynn Duddy and Jerry Bressler and given to me as a gift. My closing song was uh, given to me as a gift by um, a man called Bernie Wayne and a little genius called Sid Miller. This song, nobody gave me. I just took it for myself because I think it was written for me. 
I don't even know the man that wrote it, but I know he wrote it with me in mind. Why did I choose you? What did I see in you? I saw the heart you hide so well. I saw a quiet man who had a gentle way, a way that caught me in its glow. Ladies and gentlemen, you're crying, honey. Don't cry, sweetheart. Why are you crying? You should be so happy. I'm working again. <laughs> Don't cry, my angel. There's nothing you and I can't do together. You know that. You know, it's a funny thing. We've gone through a lot of things in our life, Georgie. You gotta remember something. We had our little babies. And now look at our Jody. A Jody, my God, the day she left for college, I thought I was gonna kill myself. I didn't want to walk by her room. It was an empty room. And the second week, it was better. Then the third week, we started to walk around naked again, didn't we, Helen? <laughs> Grabbing, touching, two for flinching. And I'll never forget the day that kid graduated. And she walked towards me with a little cap and gown. And I never cried so hard in my whole life. And I turned to Georgie in the middle of graduation. And I said, oh, God, I hope she doesn't come home now. <laughs> You get so used to them, isn't that, when they're away? Then we have the other one. We're so proud of her, aren't we, Georgie? She was vote of a slob of the year last year. Do you want to know, after all these years, I thought she had carpeting? A fungus has grown all over her room. On the floor, it's all fungus. I did a room over. I put a closet in the floor. She's never hung anything up in her life. She just opens the door and kicks everything in with her foot. She is a slob, but she's so adorable. I love all the remarks. Mommy, mommy, you don't understand, mommy. What don't I understand? Was I always 36? You think they bought that? Now, what's your other line? I love her other line. Trying I'm trying to find myself. 
Yeah, Gia knows. I said, why don't you show Daddy and I where you saw yourself last? And we'll go there with a flashlight and look. I would have loved to say that to my father. Pa, I'm trying to find myself. He would have said, there you are, Tony. At the end of my knuckles, how do you like that? And my father couldn't talk English. You know how hard it was for him to learn that entire sentence? But they bring you so much joy. And I often wonder, where do people go for aggravation that have no children? That is a direct quote from my darling Edie. But people say, how'd you make it? How'd you live through this whole thing? Do you know, sweetheart, what brought me through this whole thing? What? I, I wouldn't give you the pleasure of a second wife. <laughs> Ah, you got what to laugh. I could just see him with a 23-year-old with knobs out to here, with my fur coats on. Edie, don't let him give it anything. You hear what I tell you? My jewelry, my gorgeous dresses, no, no, my no, Bob Mackie. No, no. Dresses are too small for her. My dresses are too small for her. She must have terrible taste. But I want to tell you something. I want you to know that you're all going to be on television. This is all being done for home box office. Can I just leave them? I want to leave them with something very tasteful. And I have a wonderful joke. Uh, a about a joke. A joke. I, it's a joke. Just a joke. About what kind of joke? Just a joke. You know I always use good taste. Tasteful joke? Tasteful joke. OK? Sure? Do you hear about the drunk that, I mean, he was really bombed. And he found his way into church and into the confessional box. And he sat there a minute, he sat there three minutes, he sat there five minutes. And all of a sudden, the little curtain opened up. And the voice on the other side said, may I help you, my son? And he said, is there any paper on your side? <laughs> I know, I, I, it's tasteless, but I... Are you mad? Should I tell him about the white gorilla? Yeah. Wait a minute, can't should I tell him? Yeah. The first white gorilla in captivity, okay? The first female, they can't find a mate. There is no mate, so they put an ad in the paper. They said $10,000 for sex with a white gorilla. And a Pollock showed up. He said, there are three stipulations. The man said, what are they? He said, the first, I will not kiss her. The second, if there are any children, they are to be brought up Catholic. And the third, it'll take me about two weeks to raise the money. <laughs> I don't care. I wanted to tell it. When you, wear a, when you wear a dress that costs this much, you could say anything. You know, I sound like Yakit now. My mouth just went to the side, and I just sounded like Yakit. And I want to leave you with a little song. When you've got someone who loves you all the time, then you've got everything. And so what if you both never have a dime? You still have everything. There'll be times in life when skies don't look so bright and your dreams fall through when you turn out the light. But if your sense of humor gets you through the night, you'll be okay. 
when you look around and see so many friends, then you've got everything. When the show is over and the laughter ends, This is my manager. <laughs> Howie Hindestein, he planned the entire night and he planned my life. And I want you to know he deserves a standing ovation. <laughs> this is my Howie. I love you, Howie. You're gonna start getting your money again, Howie. Won't that be nice? No more food stamps. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We we can sit. Wait a minute. Go ahead. You can sit down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sit down. You bet your ass I was great, Florence. I want to tell you something. Sit down. You got rickets. I never saw such skinny legs on anybody in my whole life. Go polish your furniture. Here. Okay. Go ahead. When you look around and see so many friends thank you sid miller then you've got everything when the show is over and the laughter ends who wants to cry wait a minute what did you do you dumbass look at this i just killed him and now you screw me up at the end of a show who wants to wait a minute wait a minute wait who was, where, where are we? Tempo at the reprise. <laughs> when you look around and see so many friends, then you've got everything. When the show is over and the laughter ends, who was? 